The concept of communication between individuals is fraught with difficulty. Creative minds from all corners of the world and periods of history have grappled with this dilemma, with no clear answer in sight. One can only imagine the insurmountable task of first taking a story like this, and then attempting to adapt it for a different language with the core meaning still intact. In summation, the localization of animation from a different nation must require a lot of concentration, insight and information, and a strong linguistic foundation. Today, we are going to be conducting a thorough, objective analysis on the dub of a silent voice. Boss baby, bitches! Now I know what you might be thinking, how the fuck could Japan ever adapt The Boss Baby, an absolute icon for American culture, that influences how we Americans act days of our lives? The answer is actually a global phenomenon that bridges Japan and the West, and many of you savvy weebs are out there may notice the various things The Boss Baby has in common with anime culture. We've got ninjas, Ninja. furries, and who could forget the incredible, highly aesthetic homage to Piccolo's death in Dragon Ball Z. Way to go, Jimbo, way to go. So without further ado, let's talk about the Japanese dub of the Academy Award nominated Tom McGrath classic, Boss Baby. Okay, so at some point every year, a bunch of people who watch movies get together to decide which ones from the previous year deserve a shiny golden Funko Pop. At first they didn't think cartoons would be worth any of the really big prizes, but then Beauty and the Beast got nominated for Best Picture, despite being a furry cartoon for children, which clearly we have grown past. <laughs> then, Something Something Pixar, Something Something Dreamworks, and finally, at the 74th of these fucking things, they created the Best Animated Features category, to honor the artistry of the best animation teams around the world. Animators are hunched over computer keyboards, creating thousands of merchandising opportunities. Or maybe they just let it be a glorified showboating segment for Western blockbusters, and only gave it to an anime once with the occasional non-American nomination. Non-American nomination, non-American nomination, that's hard to say. So one of the hardest things about dubbing is that the actors need to actually match the lip syncing. Your new baby and as we can see here, the Japanese dub fits the character's mouth movement absolutely perfectly. Honestly, you'd think the movie was just made in Japan first, making it the anime. That's right, when it comes to lip syncing, the boss baby is right up there with legends of Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Hey, who's he? I don't know. But of course, the matching of the mouths animation isn't enough if the dialogue isn't probably localized. Just look at the English dub of Ghost Stories. The lip syncing for the dub is pretty much perfect, but the scripts was completely changed to politically incorrect jokes. Even though the original Japanese version did very well in Japan. This part isn't a joke, we have a full video about the Ghost Stories dub on our channel. Please watch it all the way to the end and hear what we have to say before chucking your two cents in the comments. And of course, the Boss Baby dub is perfectly translated. It is 100% literal to the original English dialogue. Dialogue, with no mistranslations or altered lines whatsoever, as this clip will demonstrate. And I get it, no one wants to be the guy complaining about award shows just because their pick didn't get a nomination or a trophy. People can point out all these reasons why XYZ films deserved it more, but dismissing the popular western ones as crowd pleasers might just look like sour grapes to an outsider. Plus it's hard to deny that those films also have a lot of work put into them. Things have undoubtedly gotten better over time. Past nominees included stuff like Surf's Up, Cars, the Jimmy Neutron movie, and Monster House. Nowadays we do see more films from other parts of the world, and even the more ambitious western ones get nominated. Things that deserve more recognition are getting recognized. 
Still, when it comes to the actual award giving, from the past 19 odd years, you might get a particular idea of what exactly animation means to the Oscars. Again, taste in media is subjective and all, but Rango over A Cat in Paris? Brave over Paranorman? Frozen over The Wind Rises? Big Hero 6 over Princess Kaguya? Zootopia over... these? It's called a hustle, sweetheart. The cast of The Boss Baby Japanese Dog brings together some of the best voice acting talents in the entire country of Japan that arguably surpasses the original. Not to put down the almighty god of Alec Baldwin, but we all know that the film was narrated by Tim as an adult who is played by Tobey Maguire. You know, Tobey goddamn Maguire? He's only Spider-Man from the Spider-Man. But in the Japanese dub, he is played by Mamoru Miyano, who is, uh, you know, uh, fucking everybody. He is Okabe, Light Yagami, and King JJ. More importantly, and I shit you not, he plays Spider-Man in the Spider-Man dub into the Spider-Verse. So the adult version of Tim is played by actors who play Spider-Man in both the original and the Japanese dub. Therefore, the Japanese proves that Tim grows up to be Spider-Man. This is canon now. Meanwhile, Wizzy is played by Banjo Ginga, but they translate his Lord of the Rings reference differently to how they're done in the actual Lord of the Rings Japanese dub. The Big Boss Baby is played beautifully by Chie Kojiro, who is the Japanese voice of Lisa from The The Simpsons. Twenty nineteen was a glimmer of hope when Spider Verse won. Even against the likes of Midai and Isle of Dogs, people were just so happy that an exciting, unique visual identity was getting the acknowledgement it deserved instead of getting shunned in favor of what we're used to. But the next year was business as usual, with Disney hogging the award again via Toy Story 4, beating out J. Pierre du Moncor and Klaus. Not to say that Toy Story 4 is even bad either, but for an award show that's meant to celebrate the value of the craft over mass appeal, especially in a year when a non-English language film finally won Best Picture, it still feels like animation isn't allowed to be taken as seriously. Oh sure, Martin Scorsese has massively contributed to the preservation and awareness of global live-action films, but his biggest contribution to animation is Sykes the Pufferfish from Shark Tale. And Pugo if you can count that. But by far the star of our show is the main bad guy, Francis Francis. In the original, he was played by, oh, how do you do, fellow kids guy. But the dub did the unthinkable and went even further beyond its glorious heights. The Japanese voice of Francis Francis is the one of the greatest voice actors alive today, Koichi Yamadera. He made Francis sound even more scary and menacing than the Buscami ever did. Which isn't surprising since Yamadero has done dubbing foreign films for ages. He has been the voice of the roles of Jim Carrey, Eddie Murphy, Brad Pitt, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Charlie Sheen, Tom Hanks, and oh so many more. But when it comes to the animation, he portrays many, many other famous sexy male characters like Donald Duck. Cartoon Brew sometimes does a roundup of the most interesting takes from the Brutally Honest Oscar ballot regarding animated films. Now, the Brutally Honest ballot has galaxy brain takes in regards to every category, but maybe having a look at what they have to say about animated films can give us some insight as to why the award seems so skewed. <clears throat> I have seen none of them. I have no interest whatsoever. That ended when I was six. My son dragged me to a few when he was six. I would seat him and go outside and make phone calls. I mean, maybe that's just one of the worst ones. It's unfair to expect one random guy to accurately represent the overall mentality of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. I mean, yeah, a lot of these are just people saying they weren't bothered to watch the nominees, but I did find some different reasoning. I'm not big on animation or animators. I know a girl who only has sex with animators. She works over at Disney. Uh, but I loved the red turtle. It was so simple and it spoke about life, and it looked like a watercolor painting to me. Plus, I have a fetish for turtles? God damn it, dude! <laughs>
Just to see how committed the Japanese dub is, check out Eugene is played by Fumihiko Tachiki. I dropped my $500 microphone, god damn it. The voice of the great Gendo from Evangelion. You know, the get in the robot Shinji guy. So they got the most iconic voices of all Japan to play a character who barely says anything in the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> and if that is not the most committed quality, then ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what is. Do you know who plays Eugene in the original version? Some fucking guy who works at DreamWorks. Maybe he co-directed some of their biggest hits. Maybe he occasionally voiced in bit parts in them too. The Japanese side was like, fuck that. We're gonna get the goddamn voice of Gendo Ikari, one of the most recognizable anime characters in all time, to play this character because Eugene just means that much to us as a nation. We all loved Big Hero 6 and there was no discussion, no argument, no nothing. The kids watched that one three times. What does that tell you? Yeah, what does that tell you? I only watched the ones that my kid wanted to see. That's a good start. The biggest snub for me was Chris Miller and Phil Lord not getting in for the Lego movie. When a movie is that successful and culturally hits all the right chords and does that kind of box office, oh boy. For that movie to not be in over these two obscure frickin... Chinese fucking things that nobody ever freaking saw? What the fuck? Yeah, Princess Kaguya, one of the oldest Japanese folktales. Fuck that obscure Chinese noise. But what really makes the Boss Baby dub so great is how it shows us that despite speaking different languages, we are all the same in our hearts. When the Elvises do the Elvis talk, it is still sounds the same in Japanese, proving that Elvis transcends culture and countries. There is a scars. The dub also honors the other major American icon culture figures like Julia Child, teaching a whole new generation of Japanese kids the wonders of cooking with too much better. We even get to hear all these Japanese actors sing in the background Blackbird in English. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Teddy you are only willing all this moment to our lives. The song is so important to the theme of the film, and I think it's safe to say that the Japanese actors did it even more justice than Paul McCartney himself. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. God damn it, this is all so fucking true. But the most importantly, the Boss Baby Japanese dub kept in all the baby noises from the original version. They're exactly identical. I believe this was a deliberate artist decision to show us that no matter how much the world tries to divide us as we get older, deep down in our hearts, we are all born the same. In all seriousness, the Boss Baby snubbing a silent voice in the nominations isn't really something exceptional taking everything else into account. This is just one of the funniest encapsulations of that reality. That being that multiple amazing animated films come out from various parts of the world every year, well before the animated features category existed. One problem is that many of the companies releasing these films in the West likely don't run in big enough circles to make the critical eyes of the Academy voters take them seriously. Or at the very least, maybe not in the right circles. 
I mean, if they're considered obscure now, imagine what they would be several decades ago. As much as we laugh at those absurd anonymous voter comments, I'm sure there are other voters in that group who do legitimately care. Besides, opinions can be shaped and developed over time, and a more diverse diet of films can lead to more diverse opinions. The official technical logistics of getting anime films in front of more eyeballs isn't something I know too much about, but I do know that diversity of animated cinema is already out there in the world, and better visibility for it can also help films like Boss Baby too. Maybe by holding up a mirror to them, we don't just see how other films are unique relative to them, but also how they are unique relative to other films. It's just something to make movie-going a more interesting experience. And who knows, maybe Parasite really is a good sign and the Oscars will start branching out even more. But I don't think we should just sit around and wait for that. We can do a lot of good by sticking up for films we think more people should see. I realize going to the cinemas now is off the table due to the pandemic, but after that for sure. There's plenty of ways to let people know. There's probably some digital options, etc. They may not be Academy voters, but the true Oscar trophy was the friends we made along the way. And speaking of friends, big ups to my buddy Dakota Broski for joining me today. He also does video editing for another one of our friends, Sidsnap, so make sure to check out her channel if you want to support his work. This was just a dumb joke video, but we tried to work in some interesting tidbits. A big thank you to all our patrons currently supporting us, including Reagan Senpai, Spartacus, Marissa Lenti, Seth Phillips, JR Pictures, and Unknown Secret 1000. This has been the Cartoon Cipher, and happy April Fools! And, and wash your hands. Oh yeah, and be careful if like anyone announces like a fake vaccine or something, because you know, it's April Fools, no one knows what's gonna happen.